The entrepreneur Christo Visa has got a reputation for backing some pretty decent investments. His track record suggests as much. The theory goes, if a billionaire backs an investment, it may be worth looking at. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight, I find out from Hans Roosenskuen. He's the chief executive of a late group and academy. Why the Visa family has announced their involvement as benefactors to a new entrepreneurial business development program. We know we need them, and the Visas are chucking bucks behind it. A late, you're not a late, but a late's quite a famous guy. A it's like the guy, if you are, when, when they were talking, you and Amore and stuff, um, they would have gone to Anna Late to do their wedding. I mean, celebrity weddings. That, he's that guy, isn't he? It's the big weddings of South Africa. It's, he's probably one of the guys that's the longest in the game in South Africa when it comes to wedding and event management. Okay, so again, from that comes an entrepreneurial business, comes a guy like you, classically trained musician who, who works with Anna Late, but you at some point saw an opportunity to formalize this late business and to actually get different tentacles into different areas. Um, we met actually quite accidentally and during the course of our dealings together we realized that there was a need especially um, regarding training in South Africa for the hospitality industry. Our company was rapidly expanding and we couldn't find for a lack of a word better staff mm -hmm. in the industry. So we elected to start a school, um, the Late Academy specializing, specializing in events management, and we started it many years ago, very, very small in the beginning, and then it, it sort of f helped feed our business to what it came today. And we also released many successful individuals into South Africa. Because, the, I mean, hotel school used to be quite a big thing uh, in the 70s and 80s. It was a good practical training ground. I know there's a hotel training school, for example, in Port Alfred, um, but not too many of them. And so this is a private sector initiative to boost that particular industry, the tourism hospitality trade. I think it's important to know that there's a little bit of a difference between a hotel school and an event management school. Ah. Event management is maybe a bit more project management orientated. It's like building a house. If you, if you can build a house, you can probably plan a wedding and plan an event. You go through very much the same steps in order to get to... I didn't know it hurt that much because anybody <laughs> has ever been through a house process. Believe me, it hurt yeah. that much. And uh, to work with the emotional bride, over emotional bride, is, it's, it takes a very special, special person. Um, on some special medication. Okay, now mm -hmm. I've got you. I think I understand because ha having been through the building mm -hmm. process, I understand these things. Yeah. So you, you've got this Alec group, which you are then based in Celebosch. You meet the visas, and the visas say, you've got something interesting going on here. We've got a warehouse on the farm. Why don't you pay us some rent? Um, they came about our, our road in an interesting way, and um, I think they definitely liked our business. Um, they found it interesting, or at least entertaining. We, we are an entertainment brand for that matter. Um, and we, we got offered a position on Lawrenceford. It started off with by managing the venue. There's actually a big entertainment facility Now, Lawrenceford is, is just outside Somerset West. It's right next to Fergeleegen. I mean, it's on the same little road, right? And on the Lawrence River, it's the Lawrence Ford. Correct, yes. Yeah. It's next to Fergeleegen and um, Erinroll Golf Estate. Mm -hmm. It's in the, I think we called it the Haldeberg Com. Can't remember the exact words. Um, part of Somerset West. And in general, there's a big drive in Somerset West at the moment to uplift the whole town. Um, I think for many, many years, people called it sort of the, the old age home of Cape Town. And um, I think there's a lot of individuals like ourselves and other businesses in the area that's investing a lot of time and energy to get this place going again. Mm. And I think this course is just one of those initiatives trying to point in that direction. But you, you've been doing courses before. You've done sort of the hospitality training courses or the event management training courses. But we've got a crisis of confidence in South Africa amongst entrepreneurs. You've got no choice but to become an entrepreneur in 21st century South Africa because corporates are shutting down job opportunities. So you've got to create your own job. But if you create your own job, you might as well create a couple more. And people are starting businesses. But they're starting businesses and they're flying blind. Um, a lot of the time. And I think we also flew blind for, for many, many years in the beginning. None of us had the entrepreneurial expertise to do what we were trying to achieve. And I think that is one of the sp spirit elements behind this course that we're trying to, to, to start is that South Africa doesn't need entrepreneurs tomorrow. They need them yesterday. They need them immediately. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we we started this course and the, the way we're also phrasing this course as a, a short course with maximum impact now, heavily practically orientated, less focus on theory, not because one is more important than the other, one just might have a better chance of succeeding now because the need is now.
Is, uh, is this like a, a practical mini MBA sort of thing? I would call it a mini MBA, but um, to compare it to another course would, would discredit or, or give the wrong impression. Um, our co um, a course, for that matter, is sort of outcome-based, uh, a model that has actually been proven that sort of outcome-based education is not necessarily the right route to go in South Africa. Many industries have unsuccessfully attempted mm. outcome-based education. Us, on the other hand, feel that due to the fact that we are industry leaders, experts in hospitality, but not only hospitality, in the spirit of entrepreneurship, we are people that have started businesses. They are the, our student intake is learning from people that have actually been through it mm. and not just something from a textbook and say this in, you're going to experience on on that point. But what, what is the practical element of this? Because it's, it's all well and good to go and sit in a classroom and be told this is the way to organize a wedding, this is the way to carry out a 1,000 person conference uh, and you arrive on the first day and nobody booked the generator, there's no electricity and there is no event. How much practical input is there? Well at the moment it's sort of more or less based 30 percent towards theory which is just covering the the basic elements that you require in order to understand entrepreneurship how to write a business plan, um, risk assessment, you know, all the, the steps that you go through. But from there, the whole idea is, is to actually come up with an idea. And that is the, the practical component of the course. You then present your idea to the, the academy and we hold your hand while we develop your idea into a fully fledged business plan and a thesis. Um, and by the end of that whole practical process, it then gets presented to the board and uh, the visa family are our benefactor. And let's call it a bit of a dragon's den moment where your idea that you've developed through this, this course is actually then presented. Do, is there a funding element to it? That's, there's a funding element to it. So at that point, if the idea, whoever, it's not really a competition, but the best idea put forward will then receive funding. And for that, in, are, are, is there a ballpark here? Is there two hundred and fifty thousand rand? That's very decent. It's, it's a starting figure, and um, we feel them making that statement is actually at the same time also making a statement to South Africa. Come on, guys! Surely there can be more benefactors like like ourselves to throw money into something that is really needed now. We need entrepreneurs now, and we need, for that matter, fifty scholarships for 250,000 rand in the next mm. few years because these guys are the guys that's going to create jobs, um, equity in their business, employ, How expand. How is that equity element managed? Because I'm assuming you don't get Christo Visa as the chairman of your board. He's quite a busy guy as far as I can tell. <laughs> um, how does that, who, who then manages that process? In the Dragon's Den format, you might have a great idea and there are four or five dragons and you might be fighting off the dragons. You may have your favorite dragon who you want to come on your board because you like the way they think. How does that element work? I don't think there's a specific way that element will work for the time being. Um, there's a normal set of terms and conditions to apply to. This is the first time that we are trying mm. it. So I think there's many lessons that will be learned going forward. Um, but that being said, I'm sure someone like them, someone like us, would like to play a role in this business that is being created. It's not just great plan, Yes, a check, go and do whatever you want. I don't think that is what we are trying to achieve. How many lives can you touch through this process? Because every course has its limitations. You've got space constraints, you've got people constraints, you've got time constraints as well when it comes to these things. Our initial idea was to do this twice a year. And also, since it's sort of part time and you can do it in the evening, that you also give opportunity to people that's already employed, someone that's actually in a in an office job that don't want to be in an office mm. job or in a corporate job and feels stagnated, they can't grow further. That's the reason for the timing of it. So two groups a year is what we're aiming for um, in the, the first year. In a group, I would say not more than 30, 40. That's what we can accommodate in our infrastructure. Obviously, if demand increases, we, can, we, can, we will expand and we'll, we'll address that matter at the time being. But we also don't want to dilute it too much and overtrain um, entrepreneurs for that matter. I, I think South Africa definitely needs a lot of them, but um, we also don't want to give them a, a bad quality product or put a, a person that's under-trained into South Africa. Just how involved is the visa family in this? It's fine. You're, you're a tenant on Lawrenceford. Is there participation by the family? I think they're as involved as they can be. Um, they own Lawrenceford. We see them around. They definitely play a very big role in positioning Lawrenceford. Lawrenceford is all over the place at the moment and doing a lot of effort in repositioning the farm in South Africa. So yes, they, their role is there and active. 
Okay, so they're active, they're involved, which is really good news as well. First course starts in August, part-time, it's evening. So you can have a day job, do you have to pay a participation fee on this? How do you select who is included and who is not included? Because that's quite important. Suddenly you have 150 applications, there are 40 places, you've got a problem. Nice problem, but a we, problem. Nice problem, yes. Um, we made it actually quite wide. I mean, you need the equivalent of a national certificate to sort of enter this so program. Metric. metric. Equivalent of metric. And from there, it's an application process with normal ac application criteria. I mean, we sift through the applications and sift through the personalities. We meet with the people. We Skype with the people. We call with them in order to ascertain whether they are possibly a viable candidate for this position. There's a cost involved, a minimum cost involved in order to complete the course. It's quite a big capital outlay. That's mm -hmm. the point. I mean, you, you've got to be quite serious when you come yes. and participate in this thing. This isn't a freebie. This isn't a handout. Yes. This is a chance to upskill yourself. It's a chance to participate in an economic future that you don't have a grasp on right now. It's up to you to make it work for yourself. And you may be in line uh, for, uh, for an investment in a business in the future. Yes, I think it, it touches many things. In the end, education is a business. Um, private education is a business as well. But it's also... Uh, opportunity to give back, uh, uh, opportunity of to give back what you've learned, what you've been through, and I think this course is a bit of both. That th the way we position it is very much orientated towards the future, but at the same time acknowledging what we've been through in the past and to provide these students with real examples and real things that's happening in our country and not just something that's written in a fancy textbook and say go and figure it out yourself and come up with this bright lighting idea. It doesn't work like that in the industry. And that's lovely. I really like the, the sound of it. Hans uh, Rusenskwen, he is the chief executive of the Elite Group and Academy. It's a new entrepreneurial course aimed at empowering individuals. You've got to come up with some cash, 22 grand, in order to participate. However, at the end of a four-month course, you are hopefully going to be more equipped to do your entrepreneurial ventures in a way that is different to the way you may have tried it initially. And you could even get a little bit of visa cash injection into the process. As well. Thank you for watching. There'll be more money makers tomorrow. Till then, bye bye for now.